Welcome everybody to my lower body warm up that I have created over the years. So first off we are going to start off with some foam rolling and here I am rolling out the side of the glutes, so the abductors. Um, I am going to roll on this place for around 30 to 60 seconds and this side of the hip is uh, really tight by most people and uh, especially for athletes who are using a lot of um, hip extension and squatting work so make sure to always roll out this part before we start the training the next exercise is the adductor rollouts so here you are uh, rolling out the inside of your leg and um, you want to make sure that your feet is pointing outward so your toes are pointing out to the side so you can really hit those adductors uh, really well so you want to start up all the way from the top by the hip flexor and then slowly roll down over the quads and then in the bottom position until uh, the muscle ends by your knee so just get into this position for around 30 to 60 seconds um, when there are really painful spots make sure to roll it a little bit longer there on that spot or hold it for time so you can release it a little bit after that I'm rolling out the rhomboids just because I want a better uh, thoracic extension when I'm doing low body work so that way we can have a more upright position when we are lifting and doing other type of movements so uh, the rhomboids just get tight very quickly and this is just a quick drill to get some get that area loose and uh, make sure that we can get into a better position before we start our warm-ups so the reason I'm doing foam roll before I started training is because um, foam rolling uh, is only uh, it only mobilizes you for a short amount of time so if we don't use it we will use it, uh, lose it so this is why I like to start with foam rolling first then we are going over to some blood flow work doing some standing full hip rotations and here you want to remain the other leg straight keep an upright position as much as possible so we're going to raise the knee all the way as high as possible then you rotate it to the side and then you internally rotate your hip as much as possible so that's a full hip rotation I'm going to perform 10 reps of that with nice con nice and control then we're going to perform leg swings so this dynamically stretches out the hamstring and the hip flexor a little bit make sure to keep still some control over your leg but just swing it around loosely same with the side leg raise this is great to uh, open up the hip and get the side glute a little bit activated so then we are going to move on to our dynamic warm-up we're going to perform a lunge with a side twist so with the lunge you want to keep your glutes tight and try to get your uh, posterior pelvic tilt so rotate the hips forward when you do this so in the position you go to twist to the side and try to not hit the knee on the floor always keep the knee above the floor so you can really stretch out your hip flexor the reason I'm twisted to the side is because I want to hit my psoas a little bit so here I'm going to perform again some thoracic spine rotations uh, this is just great to open up the sides of our body and the rotational aspect of our body and this will really help to open up the thoracic spine so we can have a better upright position um, when we are doing our lifts so here you want to hold each position for around two to four seconds so the great thing about the dynamic stretching is um, it will not decrease our our strength work and our performance in training um, you know we know that uh, when we are holding uh, stretches for too long it might can affect our performance and training so this is why dynamic 
uh, stretches are very very good before doing uh, our training so then we're going to perform the cat to cow and I like to perform a high reps so I usually do around 20 to 30 reps just to get the spine moving and get some blood flow into into the spine area so you want to round your back as much as possible and then arch your back as, as much as possible then we're going to perform the inswarm to frog so you want to get into a push-up position remain straight arms then we're going to get the knee as much as forward as possible as close to our shoulder and then we're going to twist to the side this will really stretch out your hip flexor and the psoas remember that the psoas and the hip flexor are very well connected and it can cause for many back problems and it will can definitely affect our uh, lower body training so it's always great to work on your rotational uh, mobility as well as hip flexors hips hamstrings uh, and the rest of the lower body so then we're going to move on to some ballistic stretching so here I'm performing 10 small bounces in the deepest range with toes forward then 10 reps with my toes pointed in and then 10 reps with my toes pointed out Then we're moving to the touch, the toes touching squat um, to the standing pike. Again, this is a great dynamic warm-up for to open up our hamstrings and the front of our shins and our ankles. So you want you want to remain your feet together, get into the bottom of a squat position, and let your knees travel forward as much as possible, and then extend to a standing pike really lock the knees and feel the hamstring stretch perform this for 10 reps so then we are going to move on some squatting mobility i'm going to perform nose to floor or elbows to floor or fingers to floor just depends uh, what your mobility is but try to aim your nose to the floor when doing this and remain your feet on the floor and hips actively uh, open so here are we performing some one leg or <laughs> one arm extensions and try to move the hand all the way overhead if possible remain your hips actively open and try to really squeeze your shoulders and use the muscles and when raising the arm overhead so this really uh, helps increase our thoracic extension and shoulder mobility um, it's also a great drill to test your thoracic mobility and your shoulder flexibility so if you suck at this uh, you really need to spend more time on, improve, on improving that then we're going to perform some basic squat bounces and these will really open up your hips ankles uh, really fast okay then we're going to move on to some scorpion twist uh, with this exercise you need to try to remain your chest on the floor as much as possible and then you rotate one leg to the opposite direction and you try to get your whole uh, foot on the floor so you try to get the bottom of your foot onto the floor and hold it there for four seconds this really just opens up the lower back and the sides of our body uh, that are really tight then we're going to go from a, a lay to an arch so when you start to go to your arch you want to use the back so so first arch the back as much as possible and then you slightly assist with your arms to get in the deepest position so hold the arch position for around four to six seconds on each rep this really opens up the front of our body and again it mobilizes our spine Then we're moving to the Cossack squats. This is really one of my favorite exercises to stay mobile. And this really hits uh, almost everything. So the adductors, uh, the hamstrings, uh, the ankles, uh, and the, just the inside of our hips. 
So this is a really great exercise. You want to remain the assisted leg straight as much as possible and you want to try to keep your feet flat onto the floor when doing this. Hold each position for around 2 to 4 seconds in the bottom of each rep. <clears throat> so then we're going to move on to the frog pose. So here the knees, uh, the inside of our knees are on the, are on the floor <laughs> and as wide as possible. And we want our feet in line with our knees, as you can see right there. And this makes sure that we are only using our hips maximally. And so here you want to rock back and forward. So choose to move all the way uh, to the back and hold it into the deepest position for around four seconds and then repeat it for reps. And you will see on each rep you can slightly move to a bigger range of motion. So here in the 90-90 position, we're going to move on, work on three directions. So here you just sit in the middle, then you lean to the side, then you twist back, and then we go into forward, and then we are going to twist to the other side. So again, bend to the side as much as possible, hold it for two to four seconds, then rotate uh, backwards, Hold it for two to four seconds, come all the way forward, hold two to four seconds, and then finally rotate to the other side. So this will really open up the hips, the inside of our hips, the outside of our hips, uh, our spine mobility. Um, this is just a really overall great movement to imp improve our up. Also try to remain your knees actively uh, against the floor at all the times so don't let your knee raise up from the floor try to keep it down as much as possible this will really just give that extra extra stretch into the hips So then we are going to move on to some table. So this will work on our shoulder extension. And I also like to do shoulder extension before we are doing uh, lower body work, just because we can get into better positions uh, when, when our shoulders are mobilized. So as you can see, the elbows are behind uh, our back. So also in the, in when we are squatting, the elbows are behind our back. So this is why we should work on some shoulder extension also in our warm-ups. Just because we can get into better positions then. And we don't have to worry about getting sore shoulders, what you hear many times of, uh, of people who are doing a lot of powerlifting. So then we're going to perform the standing windmill. Uh, this, perform this movement just with a light dumbbell. We are not working our strength here, we, ju we just want to stretch our body here and slightly activate our shoulder stabilization. So here you want to try to get your fingers to the floor on each rep and this will really stretch out the obliques and the lats and the side of our hips. It's just a really great movement to, yeah, to open up those side areas that are really, really tight by many people. I'm sure many of you guys will not get the fingers to the floor just because the sides are just so tight. Okay, and then we're moving to squat bounces. We're moving from uh, inside to outside as much as possible. So try to get your feet on each jump more wider. And this, yeah, this, you will feel it when you do it. Your hips will be burning but it just opens up the hips really quickly. Then we're going to move on to some active quad mobility. So um, you want to remain uh, your, your glutes tight, you want to remain hip extension, and then you're going to lean back as much as possible. And you're going to hold it in a deep range of motion for one to two seconds. Then you're going to push back up again. So this stretches out uh, the quads 
actively. Uh, it's just a really overall great movement, also a great exercise to prehab and rehab the knees. So then we're moving to the calf stretch by with by just doing basic calf raises. But on the bottom of each rep, you want to hold it for four seconds. So you really stretch out those ankles and those calves. And uh, when when the calves are tight, um, it's really hard to get go in a good squatting position. So when when you're doing this, it will instantly increase your squat position. Then we're moving. Okay, so then we are moving to some more shoulder mobility work and more thoracic spine mobility. So here we want to have the foam roller right underneath our scapula. Uh, we want to remain our arms straight, grip tight, so we, so we activate uh, our shoulder stabilizers, that so we can remain our shoulders in the right position when doing this movement. Then you're going to try to get the bar as much backwards as possible behind the shoulders and try to touch the floor on each rep if possible. In the bottom position, you can try to hold it for one to three seconds and then move back up again. This will really, really open up the shoulders really, really well. So then we're moving to the alternating bridge. And this is a great activation exercise for the, uh, the stabilizers in our body. So this will really activate uh, the core and Specifically, it will activate anti-rotation, so um, exercises like this are really a really must because of course when we are doing our lifts, when we are doing, uh, for example, a squat, uh, we need to make sure that our body is not rotating, otherwise uh, we can get injured really fast. Um, so we need to activate those muscles so we can use them in our training and make sure that our core and yeah the core area is just very well stabilized and activated. Then we're moving on to some side glute raises and this is a really basic drill but a really highly effective drill to to activate the side glutes. We know how our how our uh, glutes are very important in generating power um, so we need to make sure we have to we activate them properly and this is also a muscle that stabilizes our hip so we need to make sure that also our hip stays in the proper position when we are doing our lifts just because we can avoid injuries and just create that much more power then we're moving to some more activation work and here's the standing good morning. So I'm performing this with a resistance band because uh, with a resistance band I can really focus uh, on using the hips and activating the glutes and um, on each hip extension I'm squeezing the glutes together and this will really activate our lower back muscles our hamstrings and glutes um, so it's just a really great movement before we are doing any strength work then we're moving on to some kettlebell swings uh, you want to really focus here on the, keeping the feet strongly into the floor so you want we want to spread the floor at all times and then really focus on aggressively extending the hips with tight glutes this will really yeah really activate the glutes again the glutes are a really really uh, powerful muscle that we really must activate so we can have a better performance and then we are moving on to some one arm swings so this will again activate those uh, anti-rotation muscles um, like the obliques and we just need to activate it and it's just another great deal to at the same time activate the glutes and, and at the same time activate uh, the core then we're moving to some one arm one leg um, deadlifts and this is again a great drill to activate the hamstrings and the glutes and hip extension and again that anti-rotation 
So here you really want to focus on keeping that body straight and avoid uh, one shoulder moving to the side. You want to try to remain the tight position um, so we can just remain stronger and better positions when we are doing heavy lifts. Also, this will really activate um, stability in the hip. As you can see, when you're balancing on one leg and holding the weight and doing this movement, your hip willing to work well. Um, so it activates the muscle um, so it can just be in a better position and remain in the remain in the proper position when we are doing our deadlifts and uh, snatches and squats. Then we are going to do the suitcase hold. So again, anti-rotation work. So you hold a pretty heavy weight uh, in one arm. You hold it next to the sides and you try to remain a uh, straight body. So don't, don't lean to the side and also don't let the kettlebell pull you to the other side. So you try to remain in a straight, strong position. So you, you kind of want to mimic your, uh, your squatting position or the top of your deadlift. And that's how tight you must be. So you really will activate that anti-rotation and you will feel the muscles working right here. Trust me, hold it for 30 to 40 seconds. Finally, for our last exercise, we are moving on to the overhead squat. Just perform around 10 reps and with small bounces in the bottom. Um, I add this movement in as the last exercise just because this is a pretty hard movement to be in. It requires a lot of mobility and it's just a great movement to see if everything feels right and if the routine really helps you. So here are just some last words about uh, the routine. So you can do this routine every day. It's a great uh, recovery to routine. Um, it keeps you mobile, so when you're sore, uh, most people just sit around or lay around or just stay really uh, unactive. So by doing this routine, you can make sure that you stay mobile and that you really increase your mobility each week. You will see really uh, much better results in your training. I'm sure you will feel better in training. You can get into better positions. Um, this will also increase your other mobility work. Um, so just do this routine. Um, you get the right act muscles activated and you will perform better. You can definitely get rid of pain with this routine. Um, so that's it guys. It was pretty hard to do this voiceover just because it was just that long video. Um, but I did my best and I hope you guys really enjoyed and appreciate this routine. Um, if you guys liked it, leave a comment below, share the goddamn video and just give a like. Thanks for watching. Peace.